Hey everyone, welcome back to a Warlock Sanctum Interviews. Today we have Dean, who is Titanic Biking on the Warlock Sanctum server. Dean, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get into the interview questions. Uh, so my name is Dean. I've been a storyteller and game master for going on 17 years at this point. Um, I'm also a huge horror movie and genre uh, fan and connoisseur, so... Uh, a lot of what I do is horror gaming, um, with a focus on 80s horror, most of all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so diving right in there, you said you've been a storyteller for 17 years. How many years have you been doing the paid GMing? Uh, so I've been doing the paid GMing a little over a year now, um, with a focus on horror games. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, it's been really fun doing this uh, as a full-time gig. Nice. Nice. Uh, what would you say your two biggest strengths are? So um, I'd say my first strength is um, improv, because uh, a lot of the time with GMs, uh, a lot of players will complain about, you know, railroading or, you know, being pushed along a story. And what I do is I like to do what's called uh, flexible railroads, which means I have plot points that I want to happen. And then there are no railroads in between and the players will weave back and forth doing whatever they want. And I will be slapping down tracks in front of them as fast as possible. So, you know, basically allowing for flexibility of the players and being able to improv on a, on a given situation, flex the story around their actions rather than trying to dictate what they do. And that's probably my biggest strength. Second one I would say is just, Juggling a million NPCs at once. That's um, being able to jump from, you know, the evil big bad villain, you know, machinating and, you know, that they absolutely hate. Like, the players hate those villains. And then being able to go into the nice old lady who's pouring some sweet tea. <laughs> nice. All right, coming down our list. What are your two favorite systems or for those who have a broad range within a system, game lines that you enjoy? Uh, Chronicles of Darkness, hands down, is my favorite system. Uh, and between that one, it would be, I'd say, Vampire and Hunter. Uh, Vampire because that was, like, what I got started with in Chronicles. And the political uh, Machiavellian, you know, backstabbery is a lot of fun to run and then see the players react to that. Um... And then Hunter, because who doesn't like uh, having to, you know, pull a supernatural and hunt down horrible abominations that should not be? <laughs> fair, fair. So most of us right now are doing our games online. I know you're doing the same. What virtual tabletop do you use? And what do you feel that you do in it that kind of can set you above the standards? So I use Foundry uh, Virtual Tabletop. Um I got started with Roll20 originally, but I found Roll20 just was uh, not working for me uh, with the games that I was running, especially it's built more for like Dungeons and Dragons and such. Um, Foundry, what I really like about it is the system support that you get for games like Chronicles of Darkness and other ones can be far more intuitive. Like it's not a catch-all virtual tabletop. You can have systems that are very focused on the system that you're playing on. So for me, I use a Soul Cakes Chronicles of Darkness system, and it is, like, hands down, the best system that you can use for that one. Nice. All right. So some of your players, I've had a chance to speak with them here and there, and they say you're very much a narrative GM, and you have some very thespian players. Mm -hmm. How do you keep those kind of elements going on in your game? Um, so, like, uh, like the narrative aspect, like keeping, keeping things flowing or like, just a um, clarification. Just, just from what I've heard from your players, it keeps a very thespian atmosphere. There's not a whole lot of simulationist or out of character talk compared to a lot of games. Not that oh, any yeah. style is wrong, just that sounds like it's your style. And I'm curious what tools you have to keep it there. 
So, um, one, I give you a lot of narrative description of a situation. I do a lot of narrative description of emotions, empathy, you know, checks, stuff like that. Things that people could perceive about the characters, you know, well, this guy's really angry, you know, at you and he's kind of got this look of, you know, like he's going to pull out a shotgun on you immediately. And you're feeling a little nervous about that. Um, and then, you know, just basically painting a whole scene, a whole, uh, vista of not only the NPCs of, you know, you have Jack, Mary, and Jill, but you have Jack who looks like he's on a bender, <laughs> Jill who looks like she saw a ghost, and then the other person has disappeared and you don't know where they went, but they ran like hell. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. So, so I, oh, go ahead. yeah, it's a, it's, uh, it's just a lot, a lot of descriptors about the characters to make them seem more real. And then once that happens, the players have a lot of personalities to engage with. Nice. Hey, right, so we'll get to our last question. You have about an hour. A group has come to you. They want a game tonight. They're not too concerned about something. They just want something entertaining. What do you grab and what do you prep and what is your hook to get them started for a one shot last minute? One shot last minute. I have a couple prepped, but if I'm going off the cuff here, mm -hmm. uh, it'd be World of Darkness Mortals. Um, which is Chronicles of Darkness, Mortals. And, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Chronicles of Darkness, not World of Darkness. I always confuse the two. They used to call it World. <laughs> the the, the rebranding failed. We, we understand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, it would be Mortals, and it would be something along the lines of, uh, well, let's just throw this out there. Um, something along the lines of uh, someone you care about has gone missing uh, in the neighborhood, and all you have found of them is strange occult writings all over the room uh you know records ancient books and uh nobody has seen them but they didn't leave their house what's going on and uh most likely it's uh, gonna involve demons because i like demons yes. <laughs> a lot i like 80s demons there is a pit, pit to hell in their closet probably <laughs> oh it sounds so silent hill i love it um oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah silent hill is great so with that, uh, you are a paid GM, so I imagine you got something coming out or something recently released. Uh, what's your newest project that people could sign up for? Oh, I've got a couple. Uh, so uh, my two big focuses right now are I've got my two Chronicles of Darkness games. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the big one that's got uh, slots available right now is uh, Vampire the Requiem. We have just entered the the final act of the blood war in jack's crossing louisiana where the circle of the crone and the sanctified are finally going to war after like six months of them uh dancing around that subject <laughs> the reverend nice. norwood is now dead and nothing is going to go well in this city <laughs> um and then i have my i have four scion games going on right now as well that all have slots uh scion is a game about playing mythological superheroes and I've got uh, three games that are running in the modern era, and I am launching a brand new one on Fridays uh, that is going to be set in 1888 London. So Victorian era, but you're playing the mythological sons and daughters of the gods. Nice. So if someone was looking for a brand new game, not jumping in an existing campaign, the Friday one would be the one they're looking for? Yeah, that's going to be starting on July 22nd. We have a few slots left in that, uh, and that one's going to be a lot of fun because if you've ever if you ever played watch like Penny Dreadful or any of those, we're going to be delving into a lot of uh, classic Victorian era stories. But the key difference being, you know, you might be a son of Thor dealing with all this. So American American Gods meets Penny Dreadful is basically what this is. <laughs> Very nice. Well, thank you for coming out, Dean. Uh... If there's any last things you'd like to say to the audience before we disappear, uh, everyone, just so you know, the links for all these games are going to be in the description below. Oh, I'm good. Thank right. you for having me. All right. Well, this has been Warlock Sanctum Interviews. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. And until next time, have a great day. Bye for now.